Let's pray together. Gracious God, may your word fill our hearts and our minds that it might empower us as your people in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning, uh, we conclude our reading of the book of Ephesians. And if you've been in worship uh, for the past several weeks now, you've heard the writer talk about uh, the love and grace of God and how God intends to gather all things together into Christ. And it's this uh, picture of God restoring, gathering, and recreating the world. You've heard the writer talk about how Jesus Christ has broken down the dividing wall that separates groups and peoples and brought peace, which seems like a pretty significant message in our day. You've heard how the writer calls us to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called and challenges us to grow up and mature in our faith and to love as Jesus loved. And you heard last week how we are filled by the Spirit which leads us to living life that is in contrast to the rest of the world. Over the years, Ephesians has actually become one of my favorite uh, biblical books. Well, today's reading is the conclusion to Ephesians, and it also happens to be the uh, text for my first sermon when I was on internship. Uh, And I remember when I had to preach on that, that first Sunday, just kind of struggling with that text and what I was going to preach on and thinking over and over, you know, how am I going to go and preach on this text, much less preach every Sunday when I'm actually a pastor? Well, I can't tell you uh, what I preached on, on that text, but I can tell you what my internship supervisor talked about with me afterwards and how he was critical of the fact that I only talked about some of the uh, pieces of armor and didn't talk about all the pieces of armor. Well, uh, 36 years later, this text, I think, is still a, a kind of a tough text in some ways. The conclusion to Ephesians paints a rather dark picture of the world and of life talks about struggles against rulers and authorities and the cosmic powers of the present darkness and the spiritual forces of evil. It's kind of like the writer knows exactly what is going on in our world now and is watching our news. I mean, our government is in turmoil. Every day there's new details and new accusations now against the president. We're constantly hearing about scandals and inappropriate behavior from leaders and people with authority and power in government, uh, in sports, uh, even in the church. We continue to hear about terror attacks. Uh, We're constantly hearing about school and workplace shootings. And there was, uh, I just heard this morning on the news, another uh, school shooting um, just, uh, I don't know, maybe yesterday or something at a football game. Uh, Church worship attendance across the country continues to decline. Hate crimes and racism seem to be on the rise. And the culture of materialism and excesses and and greed, uh, the, the culture is just full of that. I mean, talk about a struggle against rulers and authorities and cosmic powers of present darkness and the spiritual forces of evil. I mean, the writer of Ephesians could very well have been talking about our day. Well, as I work with a text, I always ask myself, what's the central focus or the main point? And as I was working with this text this week, um, not quite knowing where to go with a sermon yet, and asking, you know, what the central focus was, I was kind of focusing on uh, the armor of God and how to talk about, you know, all the pieces of the armor of God, you know, still hearing that my internship supervisor's words from so many years ago, and asking the question, what does it mean for us to put on the armor of God? And then as I would reread the passage, the first line jumped out at me. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. This isn't about us, 
and what we've got and how we've got to do this or that or how we've got to be righteous or truthful or faithful or whatever. This is about God. It's about God's power, God's strength, and what God is doing in and through us in the world. It's about taking on the armor of God's righteousness and God's truth and strength and salvation and word and spirit and using God's armor as we work to make God's righteousness and justice more visible and more present in our world. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. You see, we as Christians and as the church are about changing our world. We're about making the realities of God's kingdom present We're about uh, pursuing God's righteousness and justice and being active in the struggle against the forces of evil and the cosmic powers of the present darkness. So how do we do that? By putting on God's armor and strength and power and allowing God to work through us. But it's not as hard or lofty or obscure as it might seem. Let me give you some examples. For about, um, I'm not sure, 10 or 12 years in my previous call, a number of volunteers from the church and I would go over to Cumberland Elementary School, which was our neighborhood uh, elementary school. And each of those volunteers, we'd all go at different times, we'd go over every week, for one hour, and we'd work with an at-risk child in a ministry that was called Kids Hope. Actually, the last little boy I worked with, I worked with for five years. And over those five years, I saw all kinds of positive changes with him. During that hour, uh, we would talk and visit about life and school and how things were going. We'd play some games, sometimes we'd read together, we'd sometimes eat lunch together, Uh, we'd do some schoolwork, and sometimes we went down to the gym and just shot baskets. On one level, that doesn't seem like much. But on another level, it's all about God's justice and working against the cosmic powers of this present darkness. I mean, these kids hope kids all come from tough situations. They're at-risk kids. Often, one of their parents would be in jail. Uh, The little boy I worked with had been uh, taken away from his mother and was adopted by his grandparents. He also had ODD, oppositional defiant disorder, which was a real challenge. A lot of the kids have learning disabilities. Um, A lot of them, their parents don't give them enough attention. Uh, Some of the kids had been abused at home. They're kids that needed the love and attention and friendship and encouragement of someone else. And when they would get it through a Kids Hope mentor or some other loving adults, it would change them and it would change their life and ultimately it changes the world. Fighting against the cosmic powers of this present darkness can be as simple as mentoring a child for one hour each week. It's also as simple as advocating for health care for all. Or resisting the rhetoric of hate and condemnation and treating all people as children of God regardless of race or religion or sexuality. As simple as resisting the constant pull of materialism and having more and more and more. And it's God, the writer says, that gives us the strength and the power to do it. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. And I think that's what the writer of Ephesians is talking about when he talks about uh, a week or so ago maturity and growing up into Christ and leading a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called and being filled by the Spirit. In a world where racism and sexism is openly practiced, in a world where all people don't have access to health care, in a world where children are without the love and attention that they need, 
or where hatred is proclaimed, or where people uh, go hungry, or where the gap between those who have and don't have gets wider and wider. The church is desperately needed. A mature church that puts on the whole armor of God and works against the cosmic powers of this present darkness. A church that is strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Amen.